we go for rebuttal on the term on this question. We now have concluded our questions, and we thank the candidates. They've done a tremendous job. It's now time for closing statements, and we're going to take those closing statements in the order that you were lined up here there on your chairs. And so, Dan Stockton, you're up first in your closing statement. Let us hang on. Should we announce how much time we have? Yes. Dan, before you begin, there'll be time people will tell you how much time you have. You, shall we just announce it? Or? Yes, go right ahead. Um, candidate number one has two minutes. Candidate number two has two minutes and 30 seconds. Candidate number three has two minutes. Candidate number four has three minutes. Candidate number five has two minutes and 30 seconds. And candidate number six has three minutes. All right. Thank you, uh, Madam Time Chair. Over there. Yes, I appreciate that. <laughs> My back, you guys have done a tremendous job. And so with that, Dan, knowing your time limits, go right ahead with your closing statement. Well, you know, um, I, I'm fortunate in that the, the yellow lights will tell me when I've got 10 seconds. So I, regardless of how much time I have, I see that. I know that I'm about done. Folks, I said earlier, and I was very sincere about it, you have six representatives up here that have demonstrated, in my estimation, of being conservative in nature. It's going to be very, very difficult for you to determine who you want to be representing the Republican Party as we go into the November election, and I feel your pain. Fortunately for me, it's easy to vote because I'm going to vote for myself. <laughs> <laughs> now, <laughs> with that said, I encourage you all to do all the research you possibly can. As a, a couple of representatives said, we're in a job interview here. What you want to find is a candidate that is well-educated, can handle the verbiage that is thrown at them in Congress, understands what they're reading, without having to go through a thesaurus and a, and a dictionary every time they read a new word. You need to have somebody like that. You need to have somebody who is uh, motivated, who has integrity and spirit. I say we all have that. You want to make sure that the candidate has the ability to convince 217 people to look at something seriously and vote the right way. Be they Republican or Democrat or Independent, they have to do the right thing. You need somebody who can stand in front of Congress and have bullets in their gun to help decide a vote. You don't want bad things passed. You want the good things passed. It's not as simple as voting yes or no. And it's not as simple as standing up and saying, you have to vote no because of one issue. This is the only reason you vote no. You have to have a loaded gun. And for this reason, and this reason, and this reason. Constitutionality is a great bullet, but it's one. You need more than one. And you need somebody who can fight for you. I'm Dan Stockton. Thank you. Thank you, Dan. All right. John Lee Smith. Les, I want to thank you for the opportunity to be here tonight. Thank you for taking time to MC this. Sarah, all of you, thank you for being here. I've traveled and shaken hands now with thousands of people from Poseyville to Putnamville, one side of the district to the other. But I tell you, as I shake hands with people, I've not found anybody that's happy with what's happening in Washington today. I've not found anybody that's going to vote for Brad Ellsworth. I've not found anyone that's not going to work against him. That's true. That's absolutely true. I've not found anybody that's ever seen anything like what we're experiencing in history today. But yet, I've got to tell you, my hope is renewed. Because as I travel across the 8th District, I find people everywhere I go, wonderful people. People of faith, people of family people that are great Americans that I'd be stand as proud to stand next to, shoulder to shoulder, and fight for our country at any time, in any place. And I'll also tell you that even I look out here in this audience and I see these warm, friendly faces, and I'm again encouraged. Because you see, I'm an optimist by nature, and I believe that, as I said a little bit earlier, and up until 2007, the, our country was working pretty well. People were working, right? Things were happening. And all of a sudden, our system kind of cracked and shaped. And I think the better days are ahead of us, but we have to send somebody into Washington that understands what caused that so that they can address it. And that's the only reason I'm here today, and that's the tour of duty that I, that I plan to take with me to Washington, is to help address those problems that affected all of our lives, whether it's your children who've lost jobs, your grandchildren who've lost jobs, those of you who are small business owners whose banks aren't renewing your loans, those people who bought houses in different parts of the country, 
good faith efforts, and all of a sudden the housing prices collapsed, and now they're underwater in their houses, right? And on and on the, the list goes, but it's affecting all of us in such a drastic way as it has in other times of history. But as I studied history, I found the tools in the tool sheds of our founding fathers that would help our nation. And that's why I'm here tonight asking for your vote on May 4th. I'm John Lee Smith. Thank you very much, and God bless you, and God bless America. Amen.